perhaps you're now plating with wet benches, and you're considering upgrading to an automated system like the Solstice from Class 1. Or maybe electroplating is on your roadmap, and you're starting to put that plan together. We hope the following overview will help you. It covers the basics your new electroplating line will require, and some of the options you'll want to consider. Of course, much will depend on your specific plating processes, fab facilities, budget, and other factors, but this video will provide a starting point for your planning. Note that we will be discussing systems that Class 1 makes as well as ancillary equipment from other suppliers. Class 1 has been helping customers to optimize their plating processes for a long time, and we'd be happy to help you in any way we can. In addition to answering your questions, we can also provide individual pieces of equipment or a complete turnkey plating line with all the necessary systems. These are the key elements that go into most semiconductor plating lines. The centerpiece is the electroplating tool, in this case, the Solstice from Class 1. The plating tool requires certain basic facilities, plus the special chemicals needed for plating, plus heating and cooling to control process temperatures, plus chemical analysis to maintain proper chemical concentrations. The system also requires mechanisms for removing spent liquids and process byproducts. Class 1 offers three basic configurations of its Solstice electroplating system. The Solstice LT is a two-chambered tool for semi-automated plating process development. The Solstice S4 can have up to four chambers and is designed for automated mid-level plating production. The Solstice S8 provides up to eight chambers for automated volume production plating. Each Solstice is designed to operate on a slab or raised floor. The basic facilities required include power, exhaust, clean dry air, nitrogen gas, and deionized water. Each tool requires maintenance access space, as well as facilities space around it. All of those specifics will be included in the Solstice facilities documents that Class 1 will provide. Plating process baths require temperature control. For this, Solstice chemical tanks incorporate heat exchange tubing through which heating and cooling liquids flows from an external source. This can be from hot or cold water from an external heating or chilling unit. A thermal couple within the tank controls the temperature. An external heater or chiller for bath temperature control can be provided by Class 1 or by a third party. These units are typically placed on the fab level with the tool, or optionally in the subfab. Inline heaters slash chillers place temperature control within the flow path, rather than using the indirect heating of heat exchange tubing. The inline method may be desirable for solvents and certain other chemicals if solstice interior space permits. Solstice plating uses various chemicals, including acids, bases, solvents, and other liquids. There are several ways these can be supplied. The standard solstice method is house bulk fill. When the solstice needs a chemical, it signals the house delivery system and opens an internal valve. This allows pressurized chemical to flow into the tool from the house system. If no house bulk fill system is available, a standalone chemical delivery unit, or CDU, can be supplied by class one or a third party. The CDU can hold drums, carboys, or bottle-sized containers of multiple types of chemicals in a spill-proof and exhausted cabinet. Pumps within the CDU provide pressurized chemicals to the plating tool upon demand. Similar to house bulk fill, the CDU can be placed at tool level or in the subfab. The total rise and run of delivery lines must be considered and will determine the type of pumps used in the CDU. Bottle fill is another chemical supply option. For this, the Solstice can have internal pumps and valves installed, plus a connection that allows an external dip tube to be attached to the tool. A container of chemical can be brought to the tool, the dip tube inserted, and chemical can be pumped into the Solstice. The dip tube can then be removed, cleaned, and stored. If there are no other options, chemicals can be hand poured directly into Solstice chambers. However, this method requires proper training and protective equipment and is not recommended except for small volumes of additives. 
Chemical draining is a fundamental part of electroplating. Chemical tanks may need emptying before a new chemical is introduced. Sometimes a stream of liquid, such as water, must drain out during a wafer process. Some liquids may be valuable, such as gold solution, and require reclamation. Other chemicals may require segregation, using special drains or removal techniques. Proper drain configuration is essential, and Class 1 will provide specific drain system requirements early in the plating line development process. For electroplating, Solstice standardly provides up to four gravity drains. The first is for industrial waste, or IW, which is the usual acid-base water drain. The second is for light waste, which is rinse water that contains up to 60 parts per million of metal content. The third is for concentrated waste, for the recovery of spent plating solutions. The fourth is a segregation drain, for chemistries that cannot be put down the IW drain, such as hydrofluoric acid or solvents. Many fabs have a central trench that contains connections for multiple drains. Sometimes the plating tool must be located too far away to provide sufficient slope for proper gravity draining, which is quarter inch drop per linear foot of run. In this case, a lift station should be used. A lift station provides a sealed tank with a level sensor and pneumatic pump. It is also able to signal the solstice to stop or reduce the flow from the tool if necessary. This unit can be located behind the solstice, or some distance away, as necessary, to provide a workable draining slope. Some fabs may not provide for capture of a particular type of drained material, such as waste that contains a high concentration of metal. In this case, a drum-based chemical recovery unit, or CRU, can capture the spent liquid. CRUs can have a single drum configuration, or dual drum with automatic drum switching. CRUs provide containment, exhaust, and alarms to notify the solstice of a full drum or error condition. If there is no sub-fab, the CRU can be located at solstice level, using a lift station to capture spent liquid from the tool's gravity drains and to pump it to the CRU. Bottle reclaim is essentially the reverse of the bottle fill option. For this option, the solstice can have internal pumps and valves installed, plus a connection that allows an external dip tube to be attached to the tool. Then an empty container, a bottle, carboy, or drum can be brought to the tool, the dip tube inserted, and chemical can be pumped out of the solstice into that container. Solstice electroplating generates two basic kinds of metal content waste, light and concentrated. Light waste can contain up to 60 parts per million of metals. Usually, this is the rinse water containing some electrolyte. Concentrated waste can contain up to 200 grams per liter of metals. This is typically the electrolyte itself. Depending upon the type of metal or the requirements of the fab's waste treatment facility, these wastes may have to be collected or segregated. Once collected, they can be sent out for reclamation, treatment, or disposal. Alternatively, some wastes may be treated on site. For treating light waste, Class 1 or a third party can supply an inline ion exchange system. This equipment features a collection system and a pH adjustment system, as well as ion exchange resin columns that extract metals. The output of this waste treatment system will have less than one part per million of metals and can be directed to the house IW drains. Depending upon the fab drain type and the availability of a subfab, the treatment system can be placed below or on the same level as the plating tool. Depending upon the installation, lift stations may be required. Plating baths generally require some type of analysis to measure the concentrations of critical components. The analytical techniques used for organic and inorganic components vary in complexity and price. Some can be integrated inside the solstice, others are standalone. Some are automated systems that can be connected to the solstice for closed loop control. Semi automated systems are also available, which require a sample to be taken from the bath to the analytical instrument. Multiple 1 liter bottles of bath additives are installed inside the solstice. Typically, there are up to three per bath, but there may be more or fewer. Total bottles in the tool will depend upon available space. 
Each bottle has a programmable micro pump that can inject additives into the bath in one milliliter increments based upon a control algorithm. Three counters are available to trigger dosing, elapsed time, number of wafers, or accumulated minutes. If an external analyzer is integrated with the solstice, it can provide information to control internal dosing. If the external analyzer can provide dosing directly, the additive bottles in the solstice are not needed. For each solstice plating bath, there is an external port to allow non-contact collection of bath samples. A clean container is placed into the sample port, the door is closed, and a button is held until the sample bottle is full. Samples may be sent for analysis or taken to an analytical instrument. An optional inline pH probe can be incorporated into most Solstice tools, depending upon the number of processes and available space. Using two of the dosing bottles for reagents, the Solstice can be programmed to add pH plus or pH minus for closed-loop pH control. Class 1, or a third party, can provide a fully automated bath analyzer that connects to a recirculating slipstream of bath chemistry that originates with and returns to a solstice plating bath. Each bath can be provided with a slipstream, and analyzers can be configured to measure more than one kind of bath. These analyzers typically require power, drains, and minimal exhaust. Some systems can dispense bath additives from the analyzer. Analyzers are typically installed near the plating tool, on the same fab level, since frequent access is required. Optionally, a Technic Real-Time Analyzer, or RTA, can be integrated into a Solstice Copper Plating Bath. This sampleless analyzer measures the organic and inorganic components of the copper bath and directs the dosing of additives within the Solstice for true closed-loop control. At present, this technique is only available for copper baths. Optionally, a range of manual and semi-automated bath analysis instruments are available at lower cost than fully automated systems. Class 1, or a third party, can provide bench-top analytical instruments that use a sample taken from the tool to measure the concentration of one or more bath constituents. These systems usually require only power, and they can be installed on any available tabletop space. Whether on patterned or unpatterned substrates, precision electroplating requires precision metrology to monitor and control processes. The types of metrology needed will depend upon the types of plating you are doing. Many of the metrology instruments may already be in your fab, although some additional capabilities may be required. The fab's isolation or contamination protocols may also necessitate duplicates of certain instruments. Keep in mind that Class 1 can provide professionally refurbished, fully certified metrology instruments for very cost-effective solutions. The required list of thin film metrology instruments includes the microscope for visual and defect inspection and to capture images for process records, the four-point probe, for measuring the thickness of blanket films, and the profiler, for measuring the thickness of patterned films, and for measuring within feature profiles. In addition, there are several recommended instruments that can also prove very useful. The scanning electron microscope with focused ion beam to measure the thickness of stacked films and to measure the condition and integrity of plating interface. The profiler, to measure surface roughness as well as residual stress and the whole cell and pH probe to check the condition of plating baths. So, those are the basics to get you started. Now it's time to start planning your plating line. You'll want to look at the specific types of plating you'll be doing, your anticipated wafer throughputs, and volumes. You'll want to review your existing facilities and your available equipment, personnel, budgets, etc. So you can begin laying out your new plating line and how it will tie in with your other processing lines. Just remember, whenever you have questions about any of the above, don't hesitate to call Class 1. We have years of experience in optimizing plating lines, and we'd like to assist you in any way we can. Whether that's providing a single plating tool, or a complete turnkey plating line.